<laughs> oh, hey, well, are, are we filming a podcast right now? I didn't even realize that I was uh, too busy doing my workout. Just getting swole during uh, quarantine here. Got on some fresh, some fresh kicks. Look at these. They haven't been worn outside, oh people. Oh, my God. Val tabs oh my God. coming through. Look how clean these are. This is my workout Send gear. Send help, please. <sighs> what was that? I don't know. What? I had this idea of a grand opening, and, uh, you know, I need to put my headphones on. I'm just excited about our guest today. <laughs> Clearly, you're getting yourself pumped up for him. I'm getting myself He's pumped up. going to be so amazing. I'm so excited to chat with him. Wally Kurth is... I want to take this time because when you say it sometimes in, in person, it gets a little like... Uh, Weird. <laughs> yeah, just a little like gushy. Yeah. So I, I want to say it when... Just to it's let just everyone that. know. Um, and our whole audience. <laughs> and our whole audience, just between us. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting... Because I was thinking about this as a, as a, a TV dad... How, what's the closest relationship that I can compare it to for someone who's not an actor and has a TV dad? Sure. It's it's kind of a hybrid between a best friend and uncle. Okay. More than just uncle, just best friend or dad. It's more of a like best friend, uncle but that makes hybrid. Because he's not actually sitting there scolding you and stuff. Yeah, you it's know? like the it's like yeah, like the fun uncle, like the ooh. fun uncle who's uh, but he, but Wally's given me some really great advice over the years. Mm. Even when I was like a punk kid who was just on the show, I remember him and Judy would really give me some like personal advice. Like even when we started dating, um, yeah. you know, I remember just just speaking with them. But but they're both. It's just so easy. Like I can't describe having a a genuine love for two people. Mm. You know. Because it's just different. I can't describe Wally and Judy in, in more than a way that there's actual love there. Yeah. You know, because you, your best friends, you love them. Yeah. There's, but it, it's a different, there's something I can't describe with them. It's truly love. Aww. I genuinely love Wally and Judy so much. <laughs> and I'm so happy um, that uh, that he's coming on the podcast. Yeah. Um, so we're going to cue him up here in a couple minutes. But yeah, I, I just have nothing. I, I just wish him and just the best just life and success everything. and everything he does, he deserves it. And uh, I just feel lucky because you, you meet a lot of people. We've met many, many people in our life. And every now and then, there's just this special connection that um, isn't even like kind of enhanced for certain scenarios. There's a lot of people through press in, in movies and right. TV where you find out later that they were playing best friends and they hated each other. Isn't that like oh, the Sex in the City yes, thing or whatever? Kim Cattrall and um, Sarah Jessica. Yeah, so, but they make it work. And then there's things that just work. There, there's sure. zero effort. It's it's a uh, thing. So um, but that's like true chemistry as well of a father and son on screen. Yeah. I feel like everyone that you've worked with luckily has been <coughs> a really good experience and really great chemistry. And even when I think about Wally or Judy, um, even Chandler too, throughout your experience with the, all of them on the show, they've been nothing but kind and just so good to me as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just, I appreciate that because those are your, your coworkers, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and they don't have to be nice to me, but they everyone's just been so wonderful, so. Yeah, it's, it's a really good group. And um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited just to kind of chat with him. And uh, and then before we pull him up to, um, is there anything else that we wanted to, to, to touch on today? Can you uh, talk to me about some of your big workouts that you've been doing? <laughs> well, the the thing about that is I, I've made up workouts in my mind. Okay. Because this, I got the new shoes, <laughs> I've got the band, and I haven't actually done it yet. So, so you're doing the C activity, how we used to talk about A, B, and C activity? Yeah. But we yeah. haven't done the A activity yet. No, and the A activity is what's most important. I didn't need shoes. I didn't need a workout band. I just need to eat less. <laughs> And I need to just do some push-ups or jumping jacks. Speaking of, my sister had told me about her, um, she goes to this like uh, workout class normally pre all of the stuff that's going on. And um, she's doing a Zoom and it's $5 a class and you go on, you do the workout. And Brie was telling me today, she's like, you got to get on and do it with me. And I was like, I wonder if it's just for women or if you could do it with me. 
So what if we did those classes? <laughs> I could use any course to sort of work out. <laughs> you want to do some aerobics? I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just have to make we the commitment do it, and do though. it. I've just been so bad. I went to bed last night and I was I was proud that I only had 2,800 calories. That is not <laughs> something to be proud of. Um, but that if I could have stayed at 2,800 this whole time, I wouldn't have gained anything. But I had to have gained it. If I had to guess, like eight pounds. I don't. I definitely don't think you've gained eight pounds. I think everyone's going through some ish right now. I think everyone is feeling the feels. We all go up we all go down we all go up we all go down we can't leave our house us especially we don't leave at all so yeah. so it's just it's just natural there's a there's this is a high stress environment that our entire globe is going through so if for a little bit you're like i'm just gonna like eat or have a drink at three or whatever it is yeah just feel the feels when it's time to get back on our stuff, which I feel like we'll we already... We'll just click right back into it. And everyone's going to. you got to realize we're all going through this. And some people, I bow down to you that have just been on it all the time. I mean, I think if also we had a backyard, we were able to go work out outside, get sunshine, I think our experience would be a little bit different. But we're not able to leave. So the people who have been able to just crush it, crush all their goals, I commend you. And, you know, not that we've been... Totally. We're getting a lot of things done. We really are. The reflection period for me has been phenomenal. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm curious what you all think too, that once we've been able to clear our mind and a little bit of anxiety over the past three weeks, like this is all kind of settled in now is like a little bit of a new normal for now. Like mm -hmm. we're still like learning about things and, and – uh, but you're really able to sit down without the distraction or stress of actual real life and you can deal with – some of the thoughts that you're having of like, what do I want to be doing? What makes me happy? What doesn't make me happy? You know, and, and yeah. I've never had that because I think all of us get so caught up in your life. You know, it's like, I don't have time to think about my future. I got to think about this monologue I have to do. I have to get to bed. I got to shut my mind off. I got to wake up at 545. I got to shave. I got to get there. I got to go block. I got to do all the stuff. Like for many, many years, sometimes you don't have the time yeah. to sit and reflect yeah. and you get caught and then you look back and go, where did this six years go? Where did this nine years go? Where did these 30 years go? We've heard some, you know, even our parents have said yeah. that, like, like I'm 32 right. years old. And what's that like for a parent to be like, wait, my kid's 32? Right. So it's, it's just, a, I mean, I'm curious for everyone who's listening, if you have had any epiphanies or any sort of like eye-opening, um, like revelations. Yeah. Is that the right word? Yeah. Uh, while you had all this free time to think. And it's interesting too, because we have technically been self-isolating and quarantine for about three weeks now when it first started i in the beginning was very in shock i felt like i was almost grieving i was sad all the time i just i couldn't believe what was going on then as time progresses and this is with anything that happens in life you kind of start really just sitting and thinking on everything like you were mentioning week two you kind of are like okay well this is real this sucks this is horrible but this is my life what can i be doing now then week three, I'm still thinking, you know, this is horrible, but you, you almost like are accepting it a little bit more. It's not such a shock. Yeah. And you kind of understand it's a new normal and you're able to reflect, think more. And for us, we've really been able to take this time to figure out what we want to work on, our big dreams, our goals. Like when we've talked about all of this, you know, many times over the last few weeks. And I feel like we have such a clear vision of where we want to go with the world that we're living in at this current moment. And we've been able to have epiphanies of what we want in our life, what's important, you know, yeah. being near family, um, you know, one day us, if we have a family, you know what I'm saying? Like just all these different things, we've really been able to sit down and figure out what we want, what's important. Yeah. Yeah. And the family thing has really trumped it, you know, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll chat about this maybe on another podcast. I'd like to dive into that more yeah. of uh, just because we've been away from family for 14 years. And I think some people who maybe went away to college or. Um, they had some, or if someone lives, like even my cousin, both my cousins live about an hour away from my my aunt. And though they're away and though they don't see them all the time, that's a different experience than being from California to Ohio. Sure. So anyone who's actually left their family from a long distance and for a long period of time could probably relate. Um, but it didn't hit it. It didn't click until about a couple years ago. And okay. that's when I was really just like, we're really missing out. And yeah. at what point do you have to decide what is important? And um, so that's going to be really interesting. To... I, I think that started too when um, everyone started having babies in our family. 
Because you really truly well, are we've out. we lost a lot of people close to us That's, in yeah. the past two years, yeah. and we've also um, there's been two babies in the family. Yeah. So I think with the with all of that mixed together, you're just kind of like you sit and think. Wow, perspective. Yep. Um, and then one one last thing, um, because uh, it's very important. It's a PSA from Freddie. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> what? Wait, I don't know. Let's see if you're gonna say what I think you're talking. I don't about. think so, because you seem more excited. This isn't more. This is more of a like, like hey. Anyway, um, at this point, I tweeted this today and I put it on Instagram. I really would advise people, and you don't have to listen to me. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just sharing my thoughts that I deeply, deeply believe right now. Is we're at a point that everyone, when they leave the house, should be wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. And it should be homemade if you don't already have masks, because that's the biggest misconception too. Everyone, like we need all the healthcare professionals to have the masks. You Correct. can make a homemade mask. The reason that you're leaving the house with the homemade mask is not to protect yourself; it's to protect others. Because the other misconception is that people are forgetting that you can be infected for days, even weeks, without symptoms. If you have a mask on, you're protecting your fellow human outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if everyone did that, no one the, the spread rate would go down. Also, there's a lot of people who are asymptomatic, mm-hmm. who never have a symptom, mm-hmm. but you're spreading it. So wear a mask, wash your hands, and we can get through this much quicker. Yep. And I think there are eventually in the next couple of weeks going, you're going to see a lot more people wearing masks, but let's get on it. And uh, it can really help. So if you agree with me, awesome. If not, totally get it as well. There's a lot of information out there, but I'm just letting you know where we stand. We will not leave the house without a mask. And I don't think we're going to leave the house without a mask for a, a, while. a while. Just to make sure we can slow the spread down. And because, yes, we're young. Yes, the statistics are stacked in our favor that, God forbid, anything happened, we would probably be fine. But you, we can't be selfish and be asymptomatic and go somewhere and give it to someone who takes it home to their vulnerable parent, grandparent, or someone who hasn't, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. So really think of other people here. Even if you're feeling fine or you're young, you're like, I'm good, I'm young, but you could have it and you could give it to someone and it could hurt somebody. So yep. that's my little one, one, one minute PSA. Please um, guys, this is so important. Yeah. Our so. future generations coming, our economy, just our future in general as humanity. And it's, it. and it's all we can do because if you sit around and wait, we can only, we, we can't help with the vaccine. We can't mm-hmm. help, like the, the people, like we can only do so much as individuals. Stay home, wash our hands, wear masks when we leave. That's and that's it. how we can do our part right now. Connect, realize we're all in this together yep. and, uh, and love one another because no matter what your background is, no matter your life path, no matter where you live, what language you speak, what religion you have, it doesn't matter. As a human being, we are vulnerable to this yep. as one. And it's showing us that we are all human. Doesn't matter about all the stuff that is. We are and one, and we can one, help each other. We are going to get through this. So be kind, be good, follow the rules, and wear a mask. Wear a mask. Guys. Okay, okay, we, we got. Okay, back to positivity. Back to positivity. Positivity. I think I think we sneak in our little education moments during this time, yeah. just enough to kind of like you know totally. let people know where we're at, but we don't bring the, the energy down. We can't bring the energy down. So let's bring the energy let's up because up. we're gonna we're gonna guest. bring we're gonna bring on. The man. The man. Mr. Wally Kurth. <laughs> so let's hop on Zoom with him right now and see what he is up to. He's good. No, it's good. He's homeschooling. He's 15 years old. And and my wife is, uh, you know, taking the bull by the horns and wow. become the teacher. He goes to they, a small... He, what's that? No, I was going to say, how, how, do, how does the, the schooling work? Does the teacher send, like, a, a plan? Is it through video or well, he, uh, Brogan goes to a special school a small school and he has a one-on-one aide and he is on the autism spectrum so he has an individual education plan his IEPs they call it so he Deborah communicates with the teacher and they get a you know they have a their you know studies that they're going to be doing but he's uh you know he's just at home but he's not always he's not always been good about working doing homework at home you know so mm. it could have been tough but He's been doing great. He's kicking ass and doing a lot of all the work. And I'm the PE teacher. <laughs> yeah. You know. Are you being active? Are you able to? I just cheerlead my wife, Deborah, you know. But he's doing great. So it's all good. 
And it's been wonderful because really in a sense, when we get out of this too, we'll have, we'll have a, a better relationship with him when it comes to like doing work at home, doing school. Oh, that's true. We can take, we can help him, you know, take it to the next level because his homework was always a little tricky. So huh. anyway, that's a, that's a positive. For me. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's going good though. It's been what, three weeks now? Three, four weeks? Yeah, three, three weeks. And it sounds like it's going to be probably, you know, they're, they're not going back to summer school. So it'll be, it'll continue through mm -hmm. the summer. Oh, man. What are you doing to stay active? You're lucky you have a house. That's me and Alyssa That's are, like, we're not complaining because we're very grateful we're healthy and we, you know, have everything, you know, going well. We're keeping busy. But the one thing is we live in such a busy building that it's hard yeah. to avoid people. Yeah. So we've been lacking, we've been yearning to be outside and i was like if we had a house and a yard like oh, you can just like look sunshine. up in the sun so and do you have a pool is that where you swim i know you like to swim yeah a lot. yeah we got we just we, we just built a pool a year ago for brogan actually and uh well for me too and i guess for deborah but anyway, <laughs> the water water is a really good therapy for him and uh, he swims almost every day in fact he swims in the ocean pretty much all year long huh. and that's one thing we're really missing it's been really challenging because he can't quite understand why the ocean's closed. Huh. And uh, you know, all the beach parking lots are all closed, but the ocean's closed. Hmm. That's not the case in Ventura. It's not the case in Orange County. They closed all the parking lots, but the ocean's open. So we've gone down there and um, there's no partying on the, on the beach. But in LA, for some reason, even though everything's closed, um, there's not gonna be partying at the beach. Mm -hmm. You know, there just won't be. And when there was, few, uh, four weeks ago was because the parking lots were open. Right. Open parking lots, people aren't going to the beach, especially now, the water's still like 59 degrees. No one's swimming. In the ocean. Oh, man. Yeah, that's going to be cold. It doesn't, get, it, doesn't start, it, doesn't get up till, it doesn't get up into the high 60s until at least June. So that's when people will start. Oh, you know, so anyway, but yeah, we have the pool, and it's great for Brogan and great for us. No, you're right. We're lucky <laughs> that we do have a, you know, a house that we can get outside and do our thing and yeah well because where we live too we're kind of sandwiched in between this very busy hallway and then we have an outside but it's very busy because no one wants to take the elevator they all take the stairs and so everyone uses this exit and this hallway and we're like we can't leave so we're just but you guys go on walks don't you you go on walks right we, we did, did but the past week it's just been it's just so crazy because like everybody's just really busy yeah like some, like it seems like 50 percent of the people are taking it serious in such a closed space yeah that, like they're not wearing masks and like the hallways are just, it sounds like like a high school just like <laughs> is switching classes Same. it's so loud and i was like i just don't want to be around anyone and get a cough in the face or something right. i'm just trying to stay healthy and do our part so uh we're we got like these workout bands that we ordered so we're gonna just work out from home with resistant really? bands and and uh we have a little patio where we let our dog out so well, and the other thing I've taken up, and I haven't gone for a couple of days, is I've taken up jogging again. I used to jog. Ooh, I to jealous. Jog. I did a marathon. I did the LA Marathon. When I was living in New York, I used to jog around the rest really? of the park, and I loved it. And then I started swimming about 20 years ago, and I just like, yeah, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. No more jogging. I'll swim. I'll do my yoga. I ride my bicycle all the time with my son, Brogan. But I thought, well, I, I, there's no, I can't go swimming anymore. And uh, so I got to do something. Otherwise, I, you know, I'll gain weight. So I got to do something to, to exercise. And I, I'm, I'm not very good about just doing yoga on my own. And we do have swim jets in our pool, but it's not the same. So anyway, I'm out there, <laughs> in the path, jogging. It up. It's all what? right. I mean, I kind of see what I loved about it and what I hated about it. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I go, I'm always like, Oh yeah, this is kind of cool. I kind of like this. And then I'm um, a while later. I'm like, I hate this. This is boring. I really need like my headphones. Yeah. It's all good. Are you, um, <laughs> are you, what's your, I wanted to ask you because you have uh, experience on both GH and days. Um, what do you think is going to happen with, because general hospital only has what about a month worth of, of shows yeah. to air where days is going to have like months. Yeah. Like, what do you yeah. think is going to happen with the with the soap world, or is days going to is this going to actually benefit days in a way where every other soap that shoots two three weeks ahead only people are going to go I need a soap I'm going to go watch days and then all of a sudden days is going to have five million viewers by September. It will have the only original content for soap. You're probably right. 
I have a feeling we may gain a few a few viewers. And you're right. Uh, I don't know what General Hospital is going to do. I do know that they're doing Friday, uh, Friday, the best of episodes on Friday. So they're trying to extend mm -hmm. their their week of broadcast from instead of airing four new shows or instead of adding five new shows, they're airing four new shows. Mm -hmm. So they'll bank that other show, which I think only puts them the third week of May. So they're going to run out of shows. And I think that's dangerous. All I know is I remember the days when during the OJ Simpson trial, we lost a lot of viewers. Because once viewers tune out, it's sometimes hard to go back. Hmm. Now, granted, this is a little different than the OJ Simpson trial when it was just a whole other deal that went on forever and ever and ever. <laughs> this may only have this may only be a few weeks. And also the you know, the the, the people who are watching the soaps now are so dedicated. You know, it yeah. takes a lot. It takes a lot to yeah. get a viewer to stop watching nowadays i think because they're just you know they're really committed to the actors and committed to the programs and it's become a real tradition but i think it is you're gonna lose some people you know and definitely they make just watch days of our lives as a result it's gonna be interesting to see and just when we can all go back to work in general yeah because it's like even with uh, with a job like even working on any kind of tv show or movie i mean it's a petri dish there's there's 150 people in one set at all times i mean i just don't know when it's crazy. you know i think it's the uncertainty i think we're all kind of like getting used to the quarantine part of it but the uncertainty of of work like i think we're, everyone's working on right now which is most important obviously the health of everyone yeah but then when the second wave of what are we gonna do with the economy that's gonna be the interesting yeah part when are we gonna get back to work and everything so oh i know and you think about it you've got hair makeup wardrobe everyone's working very a lot closer than six feet away forget about acting we have to act we're never six feet away from each other no um, you're just spitting in people's true. faces yelling <laughs> crying <laughs> hugging yeah. just, i mean just think about the makeup room forget about it general uh, days of our lives there's very little room in that in that makeup and hair Oh, yeah. And actors can't do their job with masks on, so you gotta no. act that out, you know? Forget about the hugging. Forget, that's even, you include the hugging and the kissing, but it's just like <laughs> acting just six feet apart. Yeah. That takes safe sex to a whole new level, wearing masks. <laughs> Those scenes no, will be romantic. Be, no. oh, no. we're, in un, we're in uncharted territory, honestly. And I would say that's the same for almost any show in Hollywood. Sure. You know, think about the production offices. They're all close. They're all, you know, people, are gappers, grips. I mean, you know, just studios in general. People are pulling cables and cameras and booms. Everyone's like mingling and, you know, interconnecting mm -hmm. with everybody. We'll see. Time will tell. Speaking of yeah. soaps, though, um, you obviously played Freddie's dad for how many years? How long was that? Almost nine years. Nine was it really? years. I started April of 2011. Wow. wow. That's crazy. And so what we're April, yeah. Oh my God, we're April. You know, April 11th, I think was my first day. So in three yeah. days, it'll be my, uh, it'd be nine years since I started, yeah. Yeah, it goes fast, doesn't it? Crazy, it how, would you, really how, fast. how would you rate Freddie as your on-screen son one to 10? <laughs> 10. Oh, that's a softball question there. Look at her. It's 11. Are you kidding me? All the way up to 11. Yes. Yay. No, you guys have always been so great together. Any scenes I've seen, he always would come home saying such wonderful things about working with you. And Oh, yeah. No, no. It's, it's, yeah, no. It, um, it's great. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome having a son. And on General Hospital, I have a daughter. I just started working with her. And it's fun. It's fun having, you know, children. You build that bond, you know? Yeah, no, like you it's... get closer with the people that you are playing like a love interest with or parents, because you're naturally having those in-depth conversations. And I feel like I've become really, really close. Like you and Judy, Chandler, um, I mean, I'm close with everybody, but there's a different connection with someone you play a love interest or parents. It's a deeper friendship. Oh yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, like John Aniston, you know, he was my father figure on the show. And we don't have very many of those scenes like we used to when I was younger, you know, 30 years ago when I first, my first four years on the show. I mean, I was, I was acting with John, seemed like as much as I was acting with Judy. I mean, he was a 
big part. I worked for him. I was like, you know, the guy that was like, you know, the heavy and I worked for him and, and I had all, of course, just like they do now, I had a lot of problems because he would do things that, you know, I wouldn't do, you know, he was, he'd walk that criminal line and I was always, you know, didn't want to do that. And uh, so now I'm the lawyer and stuff, but we don't really have a lot of those kind of fatherly son uh, scenes like we used to, but um no, it's great when you have that. You know, that brings, again, it's not a love story, but it is a love story. It's a yeah. different kind of relationship. And um, I had the same thing with my mother on General Hospital, Jane Elliott, you know, and she played my mother. So I'd had this mother on GH and this father figure, John Aniston, on days, and they're just different. And I have a daughter on GH and I have a son over here. And I mean, I did have a long, long term marriage with Judy and sort of on. General Hospital, I was married five or six times at five or six different women. So wow. that was never, you know, yeah. kind of a different character <laughs> in that sense in terms of his love story. But now he's a newlywed, which is fun. So and nowadays I'm like dealing, being a widower, which has been really interesting. Hmm. And working with Mary Beth has been fun and Steve. And uh, I know there's some scenes that are airing today with Jack, with Jack that Justin talks to Jack and Jennifer and those were great working with uh, Matt and Missy so it's been fun to work with different actors because you realize it's just like you know we, we do this little dance with uh, with other characters and it's like we're listening to different music and they, they, the writers have written different music so <laughs> it's just nice to work with another dancer another partner because you uh, it's just uh, it's different and you it's like keeps you on your toes and and it is just, uh, it's entertaining, you know, it's much more entertaining rather than doing the same song with the same partner day yeah. in, day out. And it can, it can get to be too much. It takes talented actors to pull off, you know, being a super couple day in and day out of- To keep that. it interesting. It does. Yeah. No, that's, I, I want to call Judy. We, I know we, we talked for probably, I mean, many times on all of us getting together, but maybe in like a couple of weeks, me, you and Judy can hop on a Zoom conference here and just all kind of catch up and- Let's do it. And chat. I talked that to her a couple of days ago. I had a, it's called her out of the blue just to check in. She's doing good. Um, yeah, she'd love to. Yeah, it'd be nice she's to- just hold up in a house out there. Cause she's probably not working, yeah. right? Or is she working? No one's working. No, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, no one's, everyone's just like, hold up. Chilling <laughs> at home. And, how, and how's, your, uh, how's your, your arm doing? Because I know, it was funny, I was telling Alyssa, I was texting you because I was like, I, I want to see it. I got a brace on it. So oh, I woke up no. like two weeks ago and I slept with my arm kind of bent like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up and I went, ow, oh, that hurts. <laughs> and then it, it never went away. Oh, no. It never went away. And I went to a doctor today and basically I have tennis elbow. But I play tennis with my right with my right arm. This is I figured out it's my guitar playing. I've been playing a lot more guitar. Probably, I've actually been playing more piano than guitar. But I've got it because you, when you're you're holding the chords with your fingers, and I just yeah. started playing. And in fact, before I came on, I, I tried it out. I have my brace on there, and it was really hurting. Maybe I could have taken my brace off. It might not hurt so much, but yeah. So I have this tendonitis in my elbow. Um, but the x-ray looked like there was no, you know, arthritis. So it's just tendonitis. I'll have to just got to just rest it. Get some physical therapy. Yeah, iced it. Take some uh, ibuprofen. Massage it. Get a nice massage. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be my, good. You my wife, Deborah, she's laughing at me because she's, she told me to go and get a cortisone shot. Well, because she did it for her knee. And she's had cortisone shots in her back and her knee. I mean, she's had a, she's had a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I went and I and I remember telling me about her knee happened but about a, three weeks ago and it's a big needle and mm -hmm. so the doctor goes just so you know it's not it's not painless it's it's, it's a significant shot <laughs> so I chickened out <laughs> oh, no. and he goes and he goes and just and I go I know Deborah just had it she said how big the needle was and he goes yeah and women can you know tolerate pain more than men and I was thinking I'm like yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> so you went to the so appointment and then didn't I didn't do it. So I came home and I and she said, oh. "Did you get a shot?" I go, "No, I got a thing and this." And she goes, you big chicken! I, I, it's going to go away and instantaneously because it still hurts. But she knew that it's an oh. anti-inflammatory. The cortisone just—I've never had a cortisone shot, so 
I totally chickened out. Oh, I thought you're wishing you got it now, though, huh? I'm such a wimp. I don't like shots. But I mean, I'll let it go. I mean, I see him in another month. If it's still hurting, I'll do it. But in the meantime, I'll I'll do the the slow the slow progress. The, yeah, the rest slow. it. It'll anyway. heal. Anyway. It'll Now's the time to rest it, though. You know, not yeah. much to do. And what what are you doing to keep yourself occupied? Are you watching a lot of like Netflix or movies or playing board games? Yeah, or music I, or? We, we finished. Yeah, we finished up. This is us. I love this is us. So well written. So well produced. So well cast. Um, we finished up Marvelous Mrs. Maisel which was fun. I have to watch that in closed caption because I talk so freaking fast. <laughs> I sometimes get mad at them. It's like, uh -huh. it's like listening to British people. Like, what are they saying? They talk, Maisel now talks so fast. I'm always, I always yell at the TV screen, slow down, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm getting old, Freddie, I'm getting old. <laughs> you start screaming at the TV for the actors to slow, <laughs> stop talking so fast so I can understand what you're saying. Oh my God. I, I, hear, I get that sometimes when I watch soaps. There's mumblers out there on GH and Days of Our Lives. I'm like, what did they just say? And, I, and I'll rewind it and like hit closed caption to hear what the heck they just said. I've thought about that before. And I think what happens is when like the producers are looking at the script, you're seeing what words they're supposed to say. So if it's said softly, you, because you're looking at the word, yes. they go, oh, I get it. But if you're not looking at the script and you're listening, there's sometimes if you're yelling or if it's too soft, um, some words will go undetected but it's a buy because they're looking at the script and they're like oh yeah you're right that's probably <laughs> the case and uh and plus they just know the scene they've heard it and they know what you're going to say because they've looked at it you're right and uh but yeah it's funny but um so those are a couple shows we just started watching ozark but that's so dark we have to like we have to take that in doses but yeah we're watching comedy specials but yeah it's uh i'm i'm, I'm really happy that you uh uh, hopped on our show. I've been, we've been dying to have you on and to chit chat and we'd love to have you back in the future and just shoot the, shoot the S. If Absolutely. You will. Let's do it. And uh, we'll bring on Miss Judy Evans next time. Yes. That would be so fabulous. I would love to yeah, hang out with Judy. Every time I even that microphone. Yeah, What's just, that microphone right there? What kind of microphone is that? This is a, um, it's called Yeti. a blue Yeti. Uh -huh. so it's it's a little better than like the computer audio that we do our podcast on, yeah. but it's not the most high end. But eventually we're gonna get it to where it's like really radio. But it's been yeah. it's been really really yeah. good. It's crisp and yeah. so. Uh, but yeah, the podcast is keeping us busy during this time because we can still produce podcasts and yeah. and interact with with fans and an audience. And uh, yeah. so it's it's All good. Right. People are going to love it. You've been a highly requested guest. So yeah, you okay. have. You're going to break the <laughs> internet, Wally. Well, next time, next time, I, I'll, I'll, next time I'll try to play something. And uh, definitely. Okay. But like I said, right now, it was just like killing me. And I went, well, that's not good. I'm not going to. Yeah. No, don't worry. No, no we'll save it. We'll save it. Good. It's never good to sing while you're in pain. No. <laughs> let, the pain let the pain come through your voice, not come through your arm. Through your arm. <laughs> Advice from Wally Kurt. <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah. thanks, Wally. You look great. Um, wishing you and the family, you know, health and, and safety and staying well through this whole thing. And uh, and let's touch base real soon. All right, Freddie and Alyssa, thank you for calling and thanks for uh, talking right. to me. And hey, everybody out there, stay safe, stay in, and stay tuned. And stay tuned. <laughs> thanks, chatting. Wally. Bye. Bye-bye.